This webcast is an introduction to some of the ideas contained in Immanuel Kant's very influential book, The Critique of Pure Reason. Kant wrote the book to prove something that the empiricists thought they'd disproved or got rid of. Um, basically that it's possible to have synthetic a priori knowledge. I'm sorry to use the technical terminology. Uh, the Critique of Pure Reason itself is full of such uh, terminology. We don't need to know that, or you can go and study it. There are many books on it. Uh, but our purpose is to locate Kant within a, a broader frame of cultural development and the history of ideas. But uh, it's inescapable that we're going to have to use little bits of uh, terminology from the science of logic and even from phenomenology. And so here we are with trying to understand the concept of synthetic a priori knowledge. Let me unpack that a bit. Starting with uh, synthetic. The, the term we're analysing here is uh, synthetic a priori. So we'll start with the qualifying term, the adjective, synthetic. Now, if you've listened to my talk on David Hume, uh, I, I've uh, given quite a few examples there of the difference between synthetic and analytic knowledge. These are the two main broad categories uh, of uh, logical inference, uh, according to Kant, actually. It was Kant that created uh, this dichotomy or this system uh, between the two. The way to understand the dichotomy between synthetic and analytic knowledge is to start with analytic. And an analytic proposition is one where the conclusion is already there in the subject. For example, a tall man is a man, or an oak tree is a tree, or an equilateral triangle is a triangle, or a bicycle has two wheels. It's, it, analytic truths, sometimes also called deductive truths, um, are true by definition. It makes them not terribly useful. And this is part of Kant's objection. Uh, the empiricists who, who uh, Kant was uh, criticising um, thought that all knowledge, all certain knowledge, uh, was deductive. And what Kant is saying, well, if that's true, we can't really know anything. The, the whole process of uh, philosophy has, has come to an end. Um, uh, and that's why he wrote The Critique of Pure Reason. That's what the title's about. It's criticising people will, who will only use deductive logic, which means pure reason. So uh, there you are with your analytic propositions. A bicycle has two wheels and so on. Uh, every other proposition or truth statement that's not analytic is synthetic. Uh, synthetic means adding something, adding something really only on the basis of observation of the real world. So we can say every oak tree is a tree. That's deductive, analytic logic. It's an analytic proposition. Every oak tree is a tree, but it's a beautiful tree. Um, that is synthetic. Uh, that we're bringing to the table uh, our concept of beautiful, or um, that it's a very tall tree is also um, not contained within the definition of a tree, because you know what's tall to me might seem small to somebody else. Depends what trees we've seen. And Russell gives some more examples. So, for example, Tuesday is a day of the week uh, is an analytic proposition. But Tuesday was a wet day is a synthetic proposition. You need to add in the fact it was raining. Now Kant is very concerned that it should be possible to make synthetic a priori assertions about the world. So we've got to do a bit more unpacking now on what a priori means. A priori is that which is known without reference to the world. Now, most empiricists either deny the possibility of a priori knowledge entirely. John Locke was like that. He thought that each of us is born uh, as a tabula rasa, um, not knowing anything at all, a blank slate on which the world writes. Um, some empiricists will 
concede limited amounts of a priori knowledge, such as uh, logic, um, some theorems in mathematics, these can be known a priori without reference to the world, or perhaps they can start as uh, a posteriori, that means seen in the world, and then be developed into a priori mathematical theorems that don't require any more empirical proof. So a priori, uh, the most famous statement of a priori knowledge in philosophy, of course, is Descartes' cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. I, I know that I exist a priori. I don't have to check that. Why Descartes was saying that was because he was a sceptic about the empirical world, that if you tried to check any ideas that you had against the real world, world, you couldn't be sure that that evidence would be true. It might have been put there uh, by an evil demon, but you know a priori that you exist. So let's. So that was the unpacking. Let's try and understand now this very complicated, mind-bending idea of synthetic a priori knowledge. It means a development of an a priori idea um, to, to add extra knowledge, but without any reference to the empirical world. What sort of ideas are synthetic a priori ideas? Take the idea that there may be, or there are, other worlds beyond the world that we can examine with sense perception, that there are other universes, parallel universes, heaven, higher realms, etc. Now, without going into the debate about whether that's true or reasonable, that proposition is a synthetic a priori proposition. It's a priori that a world exists and that I'm within it, I have to, according to Kant at least, I have to have a priori knowledge that I exist, just as Descartes says, and that I exist in a world of some sort. But from that, I cannot get analytically to the idea that there might be more than one world. So analytic a priori doesn't get me anywhere. I mean, Kant generally thinks that analytic a priori statements are um, just tautologies, such as the world is the world, or I am me. But the statement there are other worlds, or there may be other worlds, is synthetic a priori can't be tested empirically, but it's a synthetic statement just because it isn't an analytic statement. The principle being that all statements that are not analytical, all statements where you can't derive the conclusion from the original proposition, are synthetic. Now then, the proposition that there could be worlds beyond ordinary sense perception uh, would have been completely unacceptable to all the empiricists. Um, and by taking them on directly in this way, Kant is claiming to have brought about a revolution uh, in philosophy. He calls it the Copernican revolution of philosophy, similar to the discovery of the circulation of the planets around the sun rather than the sun going around the planets. It's a completely different way of looking at it all. What he wants to do is make synthetic a priori ideas, which he claims people 